Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Rebecca Thomas. And I'm Mike Warren. The debate over whether to impeach Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton will happen tomorrow afternoon. House members were notified about the plan earlier this afternoon and about an hour ago Paxton held his first news conference since the House General Investigating Committee heard a report against the AG on Wednesday. Fox 7 Austin's Rudy Koski joining us live from the state capitol with the details. Rudy. I'm Mike and Rebecca. Yeah, things are now moving pretty fast as if they weren't already moving fast. This notification memo does more than set a time and date now. The chairman of the General Investigating Committee explaining in this memo why they needed to take the extreme and rare step that they have taken. And a few minutes ago, Attorney General Ken Paxton responded in front of cameras, denying once again any wrongdoing and then also saying removing him would jeopardize his legal fights against the Biden administration. Now, here's some of what he had to say. By proceeding with this illegal impeachment scheme to overturn a decision made by Texas voters just a few short months ago, the corrupt politicians in the Texas House are demonstrating that blind loyalty to Speaker Dave Phelan is more important than upholding their oath of office. They are determined to ignore the law. They have denied me the opportunity to present the evidence which contradicts their politically motivated narrative. Now, before this memo went out and before Attorney General Paxton spoke out, I spoke to several members of the House about how they were preparing for this political showdown. It's not uncommon to see state lawmakers huddle together in deep discussion before the start of a typical legislative day. But Friday morning was different. Many of the conversations were about what they read in the articles of impeachment against Attorney General Ken Paxton. It's very troubling uh, to hear that the, uh, the highest law enforcement officer in the state of Texas is engaged uh, in some of the many items that, we've been, that, that have been presented to us, and so it's worthy of debate. Friday afternoon, House members received this memo from the General Investigating Committee. They were notified the impeachment resolution against Attorney General Ken Paxton will be called up on the House floor Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Committee Chairman Andrew Muir noted that we cannot overemphasize that the fact that, but for Paxton's own request for a taxpayer-funded settlement over his wrongful conduct, Paxton would not be facing impeachment by the House. He justified the process by stating, because of Paxton's longstanding pattern of abuse of office and public trust, disregard and dereliction of duty, and obstruction of justice and abuse of judicial process, it is imperative that the House proceed with impeachment. Despite that, some members do not approve of what's happening. It's the integrity of the House. There is no due process. There are no rules of evidence. This is double hearsay. In a legal proceeding, you don't go by hearsay, and yet we're expected to vote on the removal of a statewide elected official based on double hearsay. The chairman of the Texas GOP, Matt Rinaldi, also condemned the impeachment process in a social media post. He criticized House Speaker Dade Phelan and called the process a sham. 76 votes are needed to initiate a trial in the state Senate. The 64 Democrats in the House are expected to vote for the resolution, requiring only 12 Republican votes for impeachment. The real question is going to be how many Republicans and which ones. And so that's why I hope that the debate is, is thoughtful and considered. I hope people exchange ideas with open hearts and open minds. Look, I think this is a very serious accusations here. We need to take this decision seriously. This does not happen often, and I don't think anyone in the Texas legislature is taking this lightly. This isn't fun. Yeah, it's certainly not fun at all. Now, in this memo, Chairman Muir addressed what he calls the fairness doctrine that's been flying around since yesterday. Uh, it reportedly prevents the removal of a state office holder after an election for any past wrongdoing, as long as the voters knew about that wrongdoing before the election and they cast a vote for that individual. Now, Muir noted that the state Supreme Court ruled, uh, ruled that that claim does not apply in this kind of impeachment process and is why the last two impeachment in state history actually took place. Now, in his news conference just about an hour ago, Attorney General Kim Paxton called on his supporters to come to Austin and rally for him. I'll have a little bit more on that 
later on the newscast. We'll see you then. Now back to you.